Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabados of Dalmar, together with my co-host Mark Cronich at Statewide News Service and jbiztechvalley.com. Yeah, Rabbi, we're going to talk about a very serious topic here, right. is organ donations, specifically kidneys, and uh, New York State's involvement, and how many, uh, and, and, you know, how much of a need there is for kidney donors. And with us today, we have right. the Executive Director of the Northeast Kidney Foundation, Carol Hello. LaFleur. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And we have Rabbi Mendy Mathlis, the co-director of the Uni University Heights Chabad Jewish Student Center, who's also a kidney donor. And we wanted to talk to you about what it was like when you donated your kidney. So why don't we start with you first, and then we'll talk to Carol about her, uh, her experiences with what it takes to go on dialysis and to, if you don't get a kidney, and how that affects your life and what it takes what, you know, to be a kidney donor. So let's just talk to you first about uh, oh. your experience. Um, I donated my kidney uh, almost four years ago, uh, in November of 2010. It was an unbelievable experience, to say the least. Um, I think more than anything, you know, what, what uh, what means so much to me is that, you know, when we hear of people who are sick or battling illness, we try to help them, uh, you know, we try to pray for them and, uh, and do what we can, but not always is there something tangible that we can really do to make a difference. And, um, you know, uh, we pray and we really can, we wish we could move mountains for them, but it doesn't usually happen. And um, with kidney donation, with a simple decision, just, you know, I'm going to give my kidney, you can really and truly single-handedly save someone's life. So I think it's a very, very powerful, uh, powerful ability. How did it impact your life? Did you have any discomfort? Do you, are there things that you cannot do now that you were able to do before? I mean, honestly, um, about two months after I gave my kidney, I, I pretty much forgot about it. You know, I, and I don't think about it every day. It doesn't affect me day to day. Um, now, who did you give the kidney to? A relative or mm -hmm. a friend? No, um, actually, uh, it was a, a member of the uh, Chabad Lubavitch Hasidic community. Uh, I never met him at the time. I didn't know who he was. Um, it's a person who lives in Israel, Natanya. He's a, a father of three. Uh, you know, very very fit. He just uh, and you've met him since. I've, I've met I met him actually before. Oh. Um, before the, the donation, donation, which is not really the way it works, but. Uh, it was kind of a divine providence that we met. And, and he is a rabbi in Netanya? He's, yeah, but he, how did he's not a rabbi yet. He's just, what? Yeah, but he's a businessman. How business did it man. work oh. if you're in Albany and he's in Israel? I'm just saying even the medical logistics of it, what, did they freeze it in? I don't know. I'm just so, explaining um, it, please. What happened was, it, would, it was about two or three months before my wife and I moved to Albany to direct the Chabad house for graduate students here. And... Um, there was a sign up in the main. It dropped. You got to put it up through the hole in there. Okay, you got it. Okay, thank you. Sorry. There was a sign up in the main Chabad synagogue in Brooklyn at 770 Eastern Parkway. It just said, uh, two, uh, two men, uh, fathers of families, looking for kidneys, in need, in, need, in need of kidneys. And uh, there was a phone number, and I called, and. Um, it's a long story. But what right? made you want to call and say, we don't need an extra kidney, I don't need my extra <laughs> kidney. What, what made you go through that extra Just to answer, uh, to answer Rabbi Simon's question. Okay, so sorry. Um, <laughs> actually, the, the, uh, the, my recipient came here, and the procedure was done in Mount Sinai Hospital in Manhattan. So um, I had still not moved to Albany when the process started, and the surgery was done here. So. Uh, there was, you know, it went straight out of me, straight into him. There was no flying organs overseas or anything like that. Um, what made me give a kidney? I, you know, to be honest, I don't know. Um, something which just told me to dial the number. I, I didn't really uh, think that I'd actually be donating a kidney when I did dial that number. But um, uh, once the process started and, and, and I had actually met the person and, um, you know, I realized that it's not just a... Not just a sign; it's a real person, a real family. You know, once the process started and God had put it in my lap, I decided to go ahead with it. Okay. Now I got to ask you a question. With all due respect, and it may sound like a silly question, and I'm, everyone tells me there's no silly questions, only silly answers. But I have to. 
is there a problem with donating a kidney from a man to a woman or a woman to a man or anything Not like at that? All. Not no. at all. Not even from a Chabad everybody aspect has. or anything no. like that. Okay, no, uh, I'm sorry. Racism just, or sexism and I, kidneys. Everybody has the I, same kidneys. I just ask. I, all right, it's that's a good all. question. Okay, I'm Listen, Mark, sorry. you're a reporter. Just you're, very you ask the question. gently. I ask gently. You know, I don't but, want to. You know, bunch. Carol, I go to you that. <laughs> yes. um, you know, obviously, this person had a problem that he donated to. What is the extent of the problems that people need kidneys? How, how statistics? How many people? needed, how many are waiting for, how many donors give during the year? Well, in New York State, there are 8,500 people approximately waiting for a kidney transplant right now. Mm -hmm. Nationwide, that number is about 115,000. So those in need of a kidney make up the majority of the national transplant waiting list. Um, is there a reason why? Because you hear about that. I actually have another friend in in New York, again, I mean, I'm not a statistics to go around like you You know more than I do, but, you know, you hear more about that than heart transplants or liver transplants. Is it easier or is kidneys go get worse than other organs? Well, the incidence of kidney disease continues to rise in really? the country. Why um, is that? Well, diabetes is the leading cause of kidney failure and uncontrolled blood pressure is the second leading cause of kidney failure. So as those two things continue to increase, um, so does the incidence of those living with kidney disease. And, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, and we also do have dialysis treatment, which is wonderful because people that are waiting for a kidney have an option while they're waiting to keep them alive. Whereas if someone is waiting for a heart transplant, there may not necessarily be a treatment for them that can sustain their life. Now, let me, uh, now we have a case in Albany here with this woman, Myrna Bernstein. She's had billboards put up asking for a kidney. She's type, a blood type A or O. And she's also been on the bus placards, you know, on the sides of buses, uh, whizzing by, you know, crying out for a mm -hmm. kidney. And uh, unfortunately, she couldn't be with us today, but... You know, you know her case. I you do know, know Myrna, and, yes. And, you know, what, where she has polycystic kidney. Mm -hmm. You know, what is that? And, you know, how is that different from what you were saying about diabetes and high blood pressure? Um, polycystic kidney disease is um, most often a hereditary disease. And basically it's cysts that form on, the, on your kidneys. And at some point they, they burst. And... Um, Folks with PKD can lead to other complications, which can shut down their kidneys. But um, you know, heart it can cause heart disease. It can cause other other things. But um, it is PKD is genetic, and we work with a lot of folks that have polycystic kidney yeah, her, disease. Her brother and her mother both had yeah. PKD, and her mother passed from that, and her brother had a kidney transplant. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she's looking for a kidney donor. Now, what's the universal blood type? Is that O? Is that the? Yes. That's the yes. O. And A is rare? A is rare. There's, the way that they match them is based on blood and tissue typing. So certain uh, blood types can donate and certain right. to others and certain can receive. But O is the universal and A is, is the rarest. Is the rarest. Yeah. So it's very tough for my, yeah. because of that? Yeah, well, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I, I'm, a, I'm a blood type A, so I didn't know it was so rare. Oh, wow. That's You're so a rare weird. guy. Uh, <laughs> well, you can't do it again. Person, you yeah. can't do it again. <laughs> now, why don't we need a neck? Why do we have an extra kidney? Or why don't we need, why can we give up a kidney without having it impact someone like Rabbi Mathis? Um, You know, I, I don't really know the clinical answer to that. I'm not sure that there is a clinical answer to it. Um, you know, most folks That's are, a really question for the rabbi. Well, why yeah. did God create two <laughs> kidneys? That's I, a rabbinical was, question. Yeah. That's why I kind of changed question. it a little because I'm thinking, yeah. okay, this is a difficult question maybe, yeah. but... <laughs> I don't know that there's a clinical answer to that question. We, we Most people are born with two kidneys. I say most because... We have heard occasionally of, of someone only having one, one kidney and not discovering that until much later in and their the life. And the kidney does what in the body? What does the kidney do? Uh, the kidney cleans out all the toxins in your body. So it, it um, basically removes all the, helps remove all the waste and all the icky stuff. How many transplants are there? Like, well, you're in the Northeast. Well, I guess maybe you know statistics all over the United States. How many people are like Rabbi Mastless or... I mean, people have, like, unfortunately, you hear car accidents and 
you know, saying, yeah. well, if I'm young and, you know, then take my parts and let them, my organs, inner organs, and let, give it to someone and give them a life. But how many are there going on? Well, here in Albany, um, Albany Medical Center is the transplant center that performs the, uh, the kidney transplants. I honestly don't know off the top of my head how many transplants were performed last year. I can tell you um, it's never enough because there are people that are waiting. The statistic is that 17 people die every day waiting for a kidney really? transplant. Wow. And, how, and what's the average age of someone who needs a kidney, who's had his kidney failure or about to? Yeah. Um, it's, you know, the average age, uh, I'm going to say, is probably an, an you know, middle-aged adult, but the wait list has children on it all the way up to senior citizens. So right, there are, but, there some, are many people. but the average is in the 50s and 60s yeah. that you first see your, your yeah. organs probably changing a little and you know, because the other way, as well as would, in your 20s and 30s. What would be or? the oldest age of kidney turn like an 80 year old man? Well, I'm dying anyway, so take my kidneys. As well, you're an 80 year old kidney. I mean, <laughs> well, you know, it, I mean, I don't know. I'm asking. Um, you know, there are some 80 year olds that are in better health than the four of us sitting around this table right now. Right. So. Um, so it's not necessarily based on age that That's someone can be a donor. They are they are looking at things at the national level where they may try. You know, the organ donation system is changing in the country to try and make sure that um, the organs stay as viable as possible for as long as possible. So, for example, they uh, are looking at things like should we take a kidney from a 70 year old person and transplant that into a, someone in their 20s. That may not be a viable um, yeah, because option. Because they're going to need it for 50, 60 years, and Correct. the 70-year-old kidney is not going to You know, just go back to Rabbi Mathless, because it is the Jewish view. You know, usually Jewish people, Jewish law, Orthodox Jewish law, Torah law, doesn't allow autopsies uh, and um, you donating organs. And obviously, um, you did, and you're Orthodox. You know, just tell us the Jewish law that allowed you to do this. Okay, so um, with regards to autopsy, um, the Torah and Jewish law accord utmost respect to uh, to a deceased person. Um, When possible, we try to avoid autopsy. We try to avoid uh, desecrating the the, the body, uh, which has been a a holy holy vessel, a person that's done a lot of good deeds in their life, and... um, a body of someone has passed on is holy as well, and we try to accord it us utmost respect. So, um, we really, there are no, uh, there's a dispute amongst this, amongst, this, amongst the rabbis. There, there's, there's a dispute about this amongst the rabbis, but generally, um, we don't do um, any, any types of organ donations after a person's passed away. However, live organ donation, uh, such as a kidney or a lobe of a liver, which I think are the only two uh, organs that can be donated when a person is still alive. Kidney and liver? In the lo- a, a lobe, a lobe of a liver. Um, those are permissible. I mean, there are, um, there are certain qualifications and there are certain restrictions, so you'd have to okay it with a rabbinic authority first, but, but uh, as a rule, um, there are allowances for doing that. And so in my case, uh, the risk factor was very low, and... Um, and you're giving somebody their whole life. Yeah, so it was okay. A lobo liver is a little more risky, so um, you know you might have to. You, yeah, there might be less room for that. But general, generally, it is possible to to, to be a living donor, as far as Jewish law. But you'd have to uh, each individual case would need to be reviewed. So if, you went and got a rabbinic ruling from like a. Whether you have to go to a base then of a group of rabbis? Well, um, you don't need to go to a base and You'd have to go to a rabbi who's an expert uh, in, in medical issues. And, uh, you know... Well, you just don't look those up in the phone book. How do you find them? Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, the easiest way for someone who's not familiar with the, the uh, rabbinic leadership within the Orthodox community is to... Um, Talk to your local rabbi, and he can then refer you to you know, just like a, just like a medicine. You have your family doctor, and he refers you to a specialist. So you talk to your local rabbi, and he'd refer you to an expert in medicine that can really give a definitive ruling. Excellent. Well, now, does it have? Can it be a rabbi? That's you know. Now we have Skype and all that. Can it be a rabbi who's overseas? Oh, and sure. Out of, you know, it doesn't that's matter. Not where. An issue. Okay. Yeah. And Cal, I just want to ask you: what, There are a lot of restrictions of who can donate a kidney. 
You know, someone who has diabetes can't. Uh, someone who has high blood pressure can't. What are the other types of ailments that someone would have that would prevent them from uh, donating a kidney? Well, every um, kidney donor that steps forward is evaluated for their overall general health, and <coughs> also there's a, a psychological assessment as well to make sure that the person is that's donating is doing so for the right reasons. But things like someone that's a smoker may rule that person out. Um, if there's a history of cancer, that, that may or may not rule someone out. So they give somebody a CAT scan, for example, just to check it out beforehand? They do. I mean, a medical exam? Or? I don't know that they necessarily do a CAT scan. This gentleman would, would be able to speak <laughs> to his experience. But I know that there's a lot of um, blood testing that goes on. There's a lot of just you know, general physical as assessments, looking at health history, um, the psychological assessment. They, they look at you and then any of your family history. So ha how well. old were you when you had your kidney? Uh, I was donated? 26, which is, I think, relatively young for an altruistic kidney donation. But And you have how many children now? I have three children. Three children? Yeah. Well, thank God. Didn't, you know, and you had just gotten married? At the time? Uh, we were married for three years. You were married for three years, so you, you had no trouble, you know, didn't Well, he asked, he asked his wife. That would be an interesting, <laughs> I mean, your... Yeah, I mean, so just uh, with regards to the, uh, the testing, um, I don't think I'd ever been checked out as good in my life as I was when... Uh, <laughs> in the middle of the process, this was in the summer of 2010, we had already moved uh, to Albany after the, after the process started, and it's, a, it's a quite a long process. They can expedite it, but... Uh, I think I was in Mount Sinai about six or seven times for the various testings before, before the surgery was scheduled. So, um, you know, I, I drove down and I took right. the train many times. But, um, yeah, so they check you out pretty well. Um, I think Carol mentioned earlier that some people aren't born with, a, uh, with two kidneys. So the first thing they, one of the first things they have to check, they give you an MRI to see if you, in fact, have to. So they kidneys. do give an MRI. Yeah, yes, so I'm I mean, they, they EKGs and blood work every time and, and all different types of imaging, so they test you very well. Who covered the cost of all this? The, the recipients. Uh, insurance is, I think, always the case. Um, when you're um, giving a kidney, you, you shouldn't be incurring any costs. So uh, the process is uh, virtually no cost to you other than transportation. It's uh, it's a very easy process relatively relative to other surgeries and it's it's a win win you know so absolutely and Carol I, I bring this up only because it's an issue that comes up when you talk about these things and is that you, we can't sell our organs absolutely not right okay not. so explain more of why people might want to or. You know, is there a black market? And could you explain just a few minutes? I don't want to belabor this, but could you? Um, know? Well, there's not necessarily a black market in the United States. We hear of that um, overseas on, on occasion. But reasons to donate a kidney, I, I think this gentleman addressed it very well. I mean, you can save someone's life. Mm -hmm. And what better legacy is there? Well, because than people that? are not always as altruistic and they mm -hmm. might need the money to put food on the table and they give up a kidney for it. But mm -hmm. I'm just asking you, I mean, uh, just for the record, just to state the obvious, you know, is there New York state law? Is there federal law? There's, What's the... it, there's federal law. It's, okay. You cannot s sell or be compensated for a kidney in the United, or any organ in the United States. I, I think states. the only country in the world, at least when I donated a kidney, where um, a kidney market sort of was legalized and, and, and there, was, uh, um, there was legislature about it, was is in Iran actually oh. of all places there is um, and there is there is a movement uh, in other countries to have and in the U.S. as well um, to have uh, to legalize uh, kidney um, Com or, 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 or you know compensation for organs because you know as Carol was saying the waiting list is so big. And I think uh, when I donated a kidney in two thousand seven, uh, sorry two thousand and ten. I think the number of live kidney, do kidney donations that happened in the U.S. was about 6,000 a year compared to the then 100,000 that were on the waiting list. Mm. So there's definitely a movement to... Uh, to uh, That'll be a big motivation for, like you say, poor people. You mm -hmm. like, they yeah. can be healthy but, and they look at you but, uh, for uh, Obviously, kidney, obviously yeah. there are a lot of ethical issues and uh, that's, that's why it's not widespread. Um, but there, is, there, there, there are schools of thought in both 
mean, they're, they're both know, schools I, of I thought. Just, I wanted to just sort of bring it up okay. just because I'm sure someone in our viewership might be thinking this and it might be nice to just, I didn't want to, like well, I said, maybe, like you said, so, maybe is a thought. You know. People are going to be motivated by money, at least they're going to save somebody's life. So yeah. I don't know, I'd have to think over Jewish law for that. But, you know, I mean, it sounds reasonable. I mean, people give up yeah. something and... Uh, poor. Obviously, there's a host of ethical issues that are yeah, I know. You know, someone yeah, can't what afford to think it. About yeah. it. From the time that you an that you answered that ad or you called that person to the time that you actually tran did the had the transplant, and you said you had several visits to Mount Sinai, et cetera, what was that time frame from the phone call to the transplant? I think uh, it was from mid August, mid or early August to November. So it was a four month period. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that long. Again, I wasn't local anymore, uh, you know, when the process had started, and, and that certainly helped things back. Um, what helped a, things back? I'm sorry. I had already moved to Albany yeah. um, before the donation, and so getting in was a little bit of, getting into Mount Sinai for the testing was a little bit of an issue. Uh, scheduling for the surgery was an issue as well. But I think uh, from start to finish, I think the quickest they want to do it is, unless it's an emergency, I mean, yeah. it's always an emergency, right, unless exactly. it's an immediate emergency, is probably about two months, is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, that's fairly fast, I mean, for a person once they have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the main, the, the main weight is, is, is looking for a donor. Let me ask you, once you talk about that, if there's so many people, on the other hand, not the donors, but the donees, that, that the people who need a kidney, what kind of, like, who gets priority? Who's number one? Obviously, there's, you know, there's well, so there's many people. a match people. with the blood type and the tissue type. That's the priority. Yeah, if you're, if you're looking at I mean, at but what if there's <laughs> 50 like that? I mean, it's not, it's not, it is that unique, the match? I don't know, that's what I'm asking. Well, if you're, if you're looking at a deceased uh, donor, donation, when a, when a kidney becomes available, it goes to the person at the top of the list. So it would be the sickest person that is a match to that kidney and the best match because, it, again, it's based on blood and tissue typing. So they run a number of tests. So it would be the person that's most compatible with that particular Right. Oregon. Um, children do receive priority on the transplant waiting list. But but a child couldn't take Rabbi Math. I mean, he's a 20-year-old, middle 20s. I mean, there's bigger and smaller. I mean... Yeah, I mean, they children can receive adult really? kidneys. They, they can, but yeah. adults can't receive children's kidneys, right? Typically not. Because no. they haven't fully developed and fully Correct. grown. But a child can receive another child's kidney. Yes. Right. Yes. Because then the developmental of that uh, developmental uh, progression of that child that received the kidney yes. is the kidneys growing with that child. Correct. So Correct. I just want to make it clear that you know yeah. there is yeah. a use for children's kidneys. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so what is the most or the least known or the or the biggest uh, misconception about Kidney donations out there. You know, what, 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 what do you think? What do you have to overcome in your education as part of the Kidney Foundation to, you know, to overcome to get people to realize that this is pretty much a quick process. It's not painless, but it's, you know, it's something that you know you're you're up and about a couple of days later, you know. And you're, you know, you, you get back into the full life, full swing of things, you know, pretty fast as a, you know, it's more than a hernia operation, but it's... More you than know. hernia operation, <laughs> yes. I, I think the biggest thing to overcome is the, the fear. I mean, it is major surgery, and yeah. there are always risks associated with any uh, major operation in that way, but it's the fear of that surgery and, and just really educating people that... You know, giving away a kidney, you can still live a, a normal life. So that's the biggest hurdle that we have to overcome. And and we like other kidney donors to go out and talk to folks and let them know how the process was, mm -hmm. um, because it they kidney donors bounce back, you know, pretty quickly. And so. what's the renewal program? I heard about this program called Renewal. Are I'm you familiar, familiar with, with that? that? No. no. Okay. No. I think Renewal is. Um, is a do a, or, um, an organization that facilitates donation within the, or, uh, the Orthodox community. Oh. So um, uh, if there would be, you know, again, uh, uh, unless it was specified, um, uh, 
a, a donation of a, of a deceased person's kidney would go, you know, go through the, whoever's on the list. But when there's a living donation, you can specify who that goes to, obviously. So I think that's what renewal does. It facilitates matching people uh, within the Orthodox community who'd want to uh, give a kidney to a, uh, you know, a, fellow, a fellow community member. And uh, how, what was your biggest fear when you actually answered the vote? Was it telling your wife that you were going to give the kidneys? To, to, that to your be honest, fear? telling your wife or asking you. I mean, really, did you, I mean, you cons consulted your wife? So, I, mean, um, just, I would say you tell her. When I, it's my, it's my when, kidney. When I, um, when I first yeah. made that phone call, I honestly did not think I'd be donating a kidney. You know, you have... Uh, people are, you know, very special people are looking to give and and they really know going in uh, that they're going to be giving their kidney. And I, didn't, I thought, I was under the assumption that kidney donation is more like um, uh, bone marrow that you have to match up exactly and there are a lot of different factors, but, but unless there's uh, different antibodies that would uh, not allow the kidneys to match, pretty much, as far as I understand, uh, if the blood types match up and you're healthy, you, you, could be, you, could, you can give your kidney. So it's not a hard match, it's right. a general match. I mean, again, there are, there are different circumstances, but uh, generally um, it, it's, it's more of a simpler match. And I didn't know that at the time. So when, when, I had, uh, when we went to Mount Sinai for the, for the initial blood work and um, the nurse was telling me, you know, about kidney donation, that if the blood types match up, you have blood type A, he's A, it's all good. And I'm like, oh. It's really going to happen. So, so she's like, you were really planning on giving a kidney, were you? And I'm not, not really. Uh, you know, like I said, once um, by divine providence, the, 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 the opportunity fell in my lap. I wasn't going to, to, um, to give it up. Um, I think, you know, you, 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 uh, you asked right. the question about, um, about why do we have two kidneys. I think that the, the, the figure is... Um, a person is born with five times the kidney function that he that he that he or she needs for life, and you know as you get older you deteriorate, like your body breaks down in general. But um, that means with that with, with with when you give a kidney, you still have two point five uh, two point five times the kidney function that you need. So um, you know maybe the reason that, that we have two kidneys is because uh, God wants us, us to donate. You have a tire over here in your car. Honestly, my biggest fear was uh, w once the process had started. I I didn't tell my wife about it because I didn't think it was. Uh, real, reality. A, a realistic, but <clears throat> once I saw that it was actually going to happen, the biggest fear was, you know, how to tell my wife, but uh, um, she kind of figured out that something was up, and uh, she was amazing about it, and um, she stood behind me 100%. And, right, excellent. That's and, wonderful. Uh, yeah, so, Carol, what we have here that uh, kidney disease by the numbers, mm -hmm. 26 million American adults have chronic kidney disease, CKD, mm -hmm. One and a half million New Yorkers have chronic kidney disease. Mm -hmm. 500,000 plus Americans have irreversible kidney failure or on stage renal disease, ESRD, mm -hmm. and require dialysis or kidney transplant to survive. 355,000 plus ESRD patients receive dialysis at least three times a week mm -hmm. to replace mm -hmm. kidney function. I mean, these numbers are just incredible. Yeah, Twenty, no, the cost of much. kidney disease, twenty billion dollars annual cost of the Medicare ESRD program. Mm -hmm. uh, Forty-two billion dollar annual Medicare expenditures to treat people with CKD. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, chronic kidney disease, that which is, is different from Myrna's case. Is there case. a way to prevent this? I mean, you were talking about low, high blood pressure. Obviously, there are pills and all kinds mm -hmm. of ways to control blood pressure. I guess if you're born, like you say with Myrna, if you're genetic, you can't do anything about it, can't change your parents. But, um, but like high blood pressure, obviously people can do something about it. Yeah, a lot of the, the preventive measures are stuff that we hear about every day. You know, make, if you have diabetes or high blood pressure, making sure that you're, you're taking your medications as you're supposed to and keeping those conditions under control. But, you know, it's modifying your diet, it's exercise, it's reduced sodium, People it's choosing over water over other kinds soda, of yeah. soda and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's a lot of common sense. Stuff. So I just want to let everyone know, Myrna does have two prospects that they're yes. going through the process yes. in, at Mount Sinai. So yeah. hopefully... Hopefully Living be soon. well, something will well, come of that. What if other people want to donate it to people? Yeah, have why don't you give your commercial? <laughs> people, you know, that are watching our show and may they're motivated right. sure. now, hey, I can help. And sure. nothing happened to Rabbi Mathis. He's in good shape and uh, 
he's looking good after that. Yes, so is. they would also, you know, Absolutely. there's no problem with it. So how would they want to donate? Well, we have on our on our website, which is healthykidneys.org, we have a, a link um, to local individuals that are waiting for a kidney. It's a, it's a, a site called the Kidney Connection, and if someone is so inclined, they can go and read the profiles of the the people that are waiting and. The first step would be to contact the individual that's waiting and start a dialogue. And then from there, um, we would go to the transplant center and start the, um, you know, the, the extensive testing process. And, Mark, we're out of time. Yeah, I know, but I just want to work. say this to, Rabbi, to wrap it up. Uh, the, some of the comments that were, you know, there were many stories written about you, Rabbi Mathless, and there was a, a lot of the comments online said, to the Mathless, is very nice. You should have all the brachas you need. Hashem should bench you. Uh, wow, what a special family. May Hashem give you lots of good health and brachas. And I think that also comes from Rabbi Simon and myself. So, so. Yeah, yeah should yeah. only, uh, you're doing great work. I mean, with Carol, that of helping people with their, like you say, it's a, it's a major problem. It's not just a slight problem today. And she continued with good health and good work. Rabbi Mathlis said, well, the kudos to you that you gave up, like you say, people talk, I'd like to help, or they give a few dollars, but to give up your personal body mm -hmm. is something that your normal person doesn't do. So kudos to you, and both of you should continue good work that you're doing with good health. Thank, Thank you so you much for much. being Thank here. Thank you.